Welcome everyone to our worship service this morning. Our number's off a little bit, but we have an awful lot of sick. Our sick list is almost as long as the people that are here. It's just getting worse and worse, it seems like. But I want to welcome everyone, especially if you're visiting with us. I don't know of any new visitor. Uh, Bob and Babs have a daughter and a granddaughter out there visiting them, so it's good to see them. Anyone else visiting with us, we'd like to ask you to fill out a visitor's card and put that in the collection plate when it comes around so we'll have a record for your attendance. I'd like to read our sick uh, list. As I said, it uh, gets longer each week, seems like. Uh, Brother Kenneth Rourke is in Sacred Heart uh, in ICU. Uh, Kenneth is in critical condition, very serious condition, so let's remember him and June in our prayers always. Uh, Arnold Mungi, Arnold's better, and he is here. Bonnie Wright, uh, Audrey Pede, Jerry and Della Hill, Sue Willer, Nancy Marshall, uh, Vaughn and Marshall Underwood, Rhonda Burnett, Geraldine Yeager, Aurelia Rogers, Jerry Doran, Connie Stacy, Colleen Corrado, Corrado uh, Maria Martin, Danny Mills, Juanita Griffith, Chris Elliott, uh, I believe that's Melta Wilson, Teresa Anderson, Sylvia Day, Francis Turner, Candid Campbell, Ramona Sokum, and Jeannie Mungi. Also, uh, Brother Joel Wheeler is not here today. He's out sick. He's uh, at home, not feeling well. Uh, Jerry Griffith, he is now on hospice care. This is uh, Lucille Watkins' brother. And Amanda Underwood, Steve's wife, has been diagnosed with cancer, and surgery will be pending with her. So let's, let's remember her in our prayers especially also, and Steve. That's a bad ordeal to have to go through with. Adiva Wilson is in the Women and Children's Hospital in Mobile. She has a baby boy. They're both okay. And uh, uh, this is uh, Wanda's grand grandson's uh, child and ch daughter and child. Granddaughter and child. Uh, remember our, our sick and our friends especially, but drop a phone call or a card to those that we can. Let them know that we are thinking about them. The up, updated directories are out in the foyer to my left, so if you haven't got a copy of those yet, please pick one up. Uh, remember the, the time change for Wednesday night. We're meeting at 6.30 now rather than 7. And also remember the monthly fellowship meal. This will be at DeSoto Seafood at Gulf Shores uh, on Thursday, January the 27th at 12 noon. There's a list in the foyer that you can sign if you're, you're going to attend that so that Roy will know how many seats to reserve for those that are going. I want to uh, continue to remember the Darty family and the loss of Milan Darty, who passed away last Saturday, uh, well, January the 8th, we said Saturday a week ago, this brother Lester Smith's first cousin. And uh, also the family of Jim Webster, who passed away Friday, January the 7th. He was the father of Will Webster, son-in-law of Lester and Elaine. So we, you can see we have many sick, we have many families that are suffering for lost ones. Let's remember all of them. Have one birthday to announce, uh, Nicole N N N Silnikoff. <laughs> her birthday is Thursday the 20th. We'll wish her a happy birthday. The pantry item this week is uh, Jello, so be sure to remember to bring that so that we can uh, keep our pantry stocked. I have a card here to read from uh, Talitha uh, and Roger. It says, thank you for all your prayers and concern during the sickness of Kaylee Malik and baby and Bobby Trevor. These were serious times for our family and we are so thankful that they are much better. Please know that we love and care for all our church family here in Foley. May all of your lives be blessed in your service to God. Roger and Talitha, Potter and family. That's all the announcements we have. Uh, Brother Israel Crocker will be preaching to us this morning and Brother Willer's absence, Brother St. John will be directing us in our singing, so let's all do the song. Seven hundred seven is our first song this morning. I invite you to turn to that number. Seven hundred seven. We'll begin our worship. There the be.
398. 398. After we've sung this song, Brother Doug Wyatt will lead us in prayer. Let's all bow to the door of heaven, Father, in prayer. Dear and gracious Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that we have to assemble here to worship thee, the only true and living God. We thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for thy love and thy grace and thy mercy that has shown towards us up to this present time. We thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for all the blessings of this life that has bestowed upon us, knowing that everything we have comes from thee. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the creation throughout this world and throughout the universe, and knowing thou art the creator of all, Heavenly Father. And we praise thee, and Heavenly Father, we ask that our worship this morning be acceptable unto thee, and Heavenly Father, we conduct our way ways in the way to be pleasing unto thee that this service will be pleasing unto thee and Father especially thankful unto thee for thy son Jesus we thank you so much for his love for us his willingness to come to this earth to live as a man and then our father be that great example without sin and to go to that cruel cross of Calvary to suffer and die and shed his precious blood that we might have the remission of our sins We've been found faithful and obedient to the holy and divine word. We thank you for the church that he purchased with his precious blood. We thank you so much for being able to be a part of it, huh, Father, this morning. Dear Father, we thank you so much. And dear Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit and his work, that his love for us too, that he got in those in the writing of the holy and divine word. And dear Father, we thank you so much that we can have it and study it and read it and there are fathers that we can be able to follow it and be there are father father of us nine and be faithful unto thee that heaven will be our home 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this nation in which we live, the freedom we do enjoy. We ask you to bless the elected representatives of our nation, state, and our local representatives as they lead this nation. May they make the decisions that are right for this nation, and our Father be with them. And bless them when they make the right decision, and their Father knowing the other wrong decision, that thou will hold them accountable for the things that they do. And our Father, continue to be with us on through your service. We thank you so much for this time this morning. We thank you for this congregation that is here. Bless each member. And our Father, we'll strive and work and reach out to those around about us to spread the borders of thy kingdom. And this kingdom can turn out the world if we have an opportunity. And our Father, we thank you for our elders. Continue to bless them. As they lead this congregation, bless them with the wisdom and knowledge they need to lead this congregation. Continue to bless them and their families. Dear Father, be with Brother Weeder. Dear Father, dear Father, be with Israel this, this morning and bring some life into us and helps the Brother Weeder. Dear Father, be with all those that are sick and afflicted of our number. Uh, we're especially mindful of Henry Bork and Brother Weeder and all the others. We are have no time to name all of them, Elder Father, but you know who they are. Elder Father, ask our riches, blessings be upon them, and restore them back to them which and want to help to be as thy will. Elder Father, continue to be with us through this service. Forgive us our many sins and shortcomings. Elder Father, we ask that we will always be willing to forgive those that sin and trespass against us, nor without forgiving others that will not forgive us of our sins. And our Father, continue to be with us that we sing these songs of praise in thy name and hear that word proclaimed unto us and for able to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning in remembrance of thy Son, Jesus. Continue to be with us. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. We had, <clears throat> excuse me. We have asked you to turn to 465. And to mark that particular number in your songbook, we'll sing that song after Brother Israel has delivered his lesson from God's Holy Word this morning. After you've done that, we invite you to turn to 129 in your songbook. 129, we invite those of you who would like and are able to stand as we sing this song together.
Great to see everyone this morning. I'm looking forward to Brother Joel coming back and be able to be with us and preaching. I enjoy uh, Brother Joel's preaching so much. As you know, how helpful it is in our everyday living and his preaching. It meant, uh, it's always been something special to me. And so we do pray for his speedy recovery. I have been uh, asked to be able to speak this morning and I feel privileged to be able to do so. So I'm looking forward to this time that we have together. I'm going to be speaking on the... Thank you, Brother Bill. Is that better? Okay. Sorry about that. I'm usually a mobile guy whenever I'm speaking and I, so I'll have to anchor myself to this thing. And uh, so if, uh, if it does where you can't hear me, please do speak up again. Thank you. Um, I have, will be speaking on the instrumental, instrumental music question. And I think that it's a, a very important subject because uh, the, the church needs to hear about basic principles. And maybe you've been a member of the Lord's Church and you know these things uh, quite well, and I can appreciate that. Um, and you would appreciate the need to hear them again for the new generations that are coming, needing to understand why we do the things that we do. And the instrumental music question is something uh, that deals with such basic, powerful lessons. And so we need to be able to uh, tell people why is it that we do not have instrumental music in the Lord's church and worship? And uh, so this is a topic of interest, I think, for many people. Maybe you've been around Churches of Christ for a long time and not really sure. You've, you've just grown up and this is how we've always done it. And that's good enough for me. Well, there's more to it than that. And uh, so we're going to discuss that this morning and uh, understanding that we uh, have been commanded by God to worship a certain way, and we're going to look at that. You will find as base text Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to ourselves, and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And of course, a sister verse to that is Colossians 3, 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So uh, those are two base texts that we commonly use that deal with this. And brethren, we want to worship in spirit and in truth. That's something that we need to hear more often. John 4, 23 and 24, we know the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. These are things that the Lord's church needs to sound throughout pulpits regularly and that our younger generations that grow up will understand that the church of Christ uh, does what it does because God said so, not because the church of Christ said so. And these are important principles. So we're going to look at our first point being uh, instrumental music defined. If we're going to discuss about that, let's talk about what does it mean. Because we do have instrumental music in worship. It's just not what people think that it commonly is. Because the, uh, the word music in the original language is symphonia, and it is uh, a sounding together is what it means. It's, uh, music is things that sound together and that they blend. Uh, you can look at the definition in Merriam-Webster's definition. 
you will find something important. I think Miriam gets this right, that uh, company vocal or uh, instrumental sounds having rhythm, melody, or harmony. Uh, so you can observe that there are two types of music. There is the vocal type music, and then, of course, that which is mechanically made. So that's very important in talking about instrumental music. I just said, yeah, we do have instrumental music in worship, but it's not what the world thinks that it is. So you see example of this. I like 1 Samuel 16, 16, because King Saul has pretty much... Uh, been removed by God as being a king and uh, God has sent an evil spirit upon him as the text reads and the servants uh, in 1 Samuel 16, 16 which are before thee let him com command that a man go out and find a man, a cunning man who is a player on the harp and it shall come to pass that when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well. So I like that passage because it mentions playing with a hand and upon the harp. And of course, the other type of music being the vocal is defined in Hebrews 13, 15. Okay, that's, uh, uh, let us offer, therefore offer sacrifice of praise of God continually, that is by the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to, praise to his name. So Hebrews 13, 15 is a definition, uh, an example of music being by the fruit of our lips. So now, after, now that we've defined instrumental music being two kinds, let's look at a very important principle. And our second point is ascertaining biblical authority for what we do. This is uh, what sets the Lord's church apart. Okay, If you want to go ahead and be turning to Leviticus 10... And understanding that all authority has been given unto Jesus, as he said in Matthew 28, 18, he told the apostles before he would ascend, all power or all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then also we know, as commanded, whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That's Colossians 3, 17. That passage teaches that we are to do everything according to his authority or in his name. So everything that we do has to be done according to what his authority is. All right? Leviticus 10 is a powerful passage and uh, because it is a principle that teaches about worship and holiness of it. Um, this was the Mosaic age when the Levitical priesthood, they were being told what to do. But here, when you begin to read in verse 1 of Leviticus 10, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of, his Aaron, uh, sons of Aaron, took either of him his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon. Now watch this. And offered strange fire unto the Lord, which he commanded them not Okay, so that's important. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. What serious consequences? You see, these were the two high priest sons, and they had offered strange fire. What made it strange? Which he commanded them not. So God does not take lightly to things that are done which he does not command. And so... But read verse 3 also. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that that the Lord spake, saying. So Moses goes to Aaron and says, This is what God said. I will be sanctified in them that come nigh unto me. And before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. It didn't matter if it was his sons or not. God says, you are going to do what I say. You are going to set me apart from what happens in this world. And it's the same thing for our worship today. Okay? That's very important. When you go back to the time of Genesis, the book of beginnings, 
You see, the first account of worship, this was a problem. We, I'm sure there were other times worship was taking place, but God made it uh, known this first time of worship being what we call will worship or choosing to do worship the way I want. Genesis uh, 4, beginning with verse 3, and in the process of time, <coughs> Cain brought of the fruit of the ground for an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Two types of worship that took place. Cain brings the fruit of the ground. Cain bring, or Abel rather, brings something different. He brings the fat thereof and the lambs and the blood and the firstlings of the flock. When we read elsewhere in the Bible, Hebrews 11 says, verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Why? And that it was even a testimony to the fact that even though he's being dead, yet speaks by this sacrifice. What was it? It was by faith. So we can put these two passages together and see that Abel's offering was by faith and Cain's was not. That's the problem. You see, Cain had the idea of, well, I'm going to worship however I want to. And he got angry that God didn't accept it. Whereas Abel's was by faith. Rather than it was by faith, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In other words, Abel obeyed God's word. Cain did not. So when we talk about ascertaining biblical authority, we have to look for what God has commanded us. In our time now, especially in worship, yes, everything that we do, all of it, whether it's uh, preaching or, uh, or uh, mission work or whatever, we're supposed to do all things, eldership, deacons, everything that we do has to be according to his authority. But right now we're talking about the authority of worship. Let's talk about one more powerful principle in um, ascertaining or learning what God wants us to do, biblical authority, and that is the silence of the Scriptures. The silence of the Scriptures does not give us permission to do anything. So what do we mean by the silence of the Scriptures? Um, well, when we look at, in the passages that we read in Ephesians 5.19, uh, Hebrews 13.15, Colossians 3.16, and other passages in Hebrews 2 that we can mention, the New Testament does not have worship with the mechanical instrument of music. It doesn't. The Bible is silent on it. And this is, we're going to look at, uh, is a problem with some people. Silence does not give us permission, and we can establish, say, with an illustration like Noah. We know that Noah was to build an ark. He says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and pitch it within and without with pitch. Genesis 6, 14. Now, when God told Noah, Make an ark of gopher wood, it ruled out all of the others. See, the silence of the scriptures, God tells us what he wants us to do. He doesn't have to turn around and rewrite it and say, don't use this, don't use this, don't use this, don't use this. He says, make thee an ark of gopher wood. And so it eliminated all of the other woods to be typed. So, to be used, rather. So, if you were to... If Noah were to have used a different wood, we know that it wouldn't have been by faith and he would not have been obedient. You see, authority has to do with what God gives us permission to do. A lot of times what happens is people say, well, where does the Bible say we can't do it? And all kind of things in life. Where, where does the Bible say I can't do that? 
Where does the Bible say we can't use instrumental music? Well, God told us what to do. And he was silent on everything else. And we understand that. Coming together upon the first day of the week, God did not have to put in there in Acts 20 and verse 7, don't come Monday, don't come Tuesday, don't come Wednesday, don't come Thursday. He didn't have to write the Bible, and he didn't in such a way. And so there are other illustrations we use in our everyday life that, that, that apply this way. So when it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, we understand that singing with grace in your hearts, nothing else God has given us permission to do. Okay, so now, that's an important point, which we can spend more time on. But now... And we will move on to our next one. And that is, here are some arguments that people have, or even misunderstandings of people who have said in the past, why we can use mechanical instruments of music. And they will use uh, passages in the Bible. They will say, that, you know, the Bible teaches that instrumental music was used. And you can't argue with that. You can't. I mean, you go to a fee, uh, Exodus 15. It's a great example of that. This is right after the Red Sea event that takes place in Exodus 14. Pharaoh and his army has been destroyed, and Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand and dances, and all of the ladies went out with her with timbrels and dances, and she's Miriam says, sing ye unto the Lord. So, see, right there you have mechanical instruments being used and even encouraged and even lifted up as a great example. Uh, if you will, turn to Psalm 150. Psalm 150. And uh, book of Psalms, as we know. You speak with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So, see? Even in the book of Psalms, which the word psalms is used in Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3, when we read Psalm 150, let's see what it says. It's, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent graces. Here you go. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. You're catching a whole gamut of mechanical instruments here. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And so they would say, see, the Bible teaches mechanical instruments of music. One of the things that separated in the restoration movement, the Lord's, the movement that would produce the, the kingdom being restored, is the, the, def, the defining and the dividing properly of the covenants that is, between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It was one of the monumental movements that helped. And the Bible teaches a division of the covenants. You'll notice that they go uh, to just the Old Testament here. And they misunderstand the division of the covenants. You see, we, we don't uh, live under the times at which these events we... Uh, have read Miriam singing what she did and David uh, upon an, uh, playing upon a, a harp it's ten strings Psalm 92 3 and other passages that we can mention uh, these all happened during the time of the Old Testament also the old law as it is known incidentally though when you look at the design of the Lord's church as a type uh, the antitype of the tabernacle and the uh, what's been later the temple in the same time period 
you had the tabernacle, which you had a division of the holy place and the most holy place. And then the priest, who were only allowed, could only come in, had to wash in the laver before they came into the holy place. Now, the holy place is a type of the church, and we understand what that laver means. Before you come into the Lord's church, you must wash before. But my point is this. There was never any mechanical instruments of music that we read about brought into that place. It was never in the mind of God to have it in the worship that would be meant for us today. I think that speaks volumes that it was not allowed. But we understand under the same dispensation, you had those uh, to worship had to offer animal sacrifices. Hebrews 10 4 says, for the blood of, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. The body thou hast prepared for me. That body being Jesus, Hebrews 10, 5. See, under the old law, it was never meant to be the final system. Never in God's mind. And Jesus, when he came preaching, said, I didn't come to put new wine in old wineskins. Or put a new patch on an old garment. In other words, his preaching and teaching and the New Testament was not going to be an adjunct or an add-on to that law system. Jesus came to fulfill the law, which he did. When he died on the cross, he removed that whole system. He fulfilled it, Colossians 2.14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So please, we can't go to the Old Testament. Brother Foy Wallace Jr. used to say, and they bring out David's old rusty harp and try to make it an argument that we uh, already use mechanical instruments. Brother, that whole system has been done away. So we, under the Christian dispensation, look for what God has permitted us to do. All right, now, here's another argument that people will say. There was a famous uh, uh, debate between Boswell and N.B. Hardeman over this particular thing because you would have movements that would spring even out of the Lord's church, say the Christian church, which took the view, well, the Bible doesn't say we can't use mechanical instruments. Therefore, it gives us permission to do so. Remember that Division doesn't come over what the Bible says. It comes over what the Bible doesn't say. Because everybody has all their ideas and how to work things out. That's how division comes. But one of the things that they would say is that, well, just like someone can use a song book, someone can use a pitch pipe, or someone can use even microphones, you can use the mechanical instrument of music because it's an aid... <laughs> to worship too. So, therefore, it's accepted, that is, the mechanical instruments of music are allowed just as the microphone or songbooks or whatever else you want to pitch pipe, throw it in there. And it was confusing. I mean, that's, that's well, how do you answer that? Well, you could obviously go by... The, the idea of silence of the scripture. We've already answered that part, but let's answer their argument. There is true that you do have expedients that help enhance worship. I'm grateful to be able to read out of a song book the, the notes that are there and for us to all use those uh, books to be able to sing the same words to follow Brother Sewell and uh, maybe look at the key signature or the time signature or anything like that, and it helps. But it doesn't change the type of music. Notice that. It doesn't change the type of music. That song, I haven't heard that song book play a single note yet, and it hasn't sung anything either. And some people also will have issue with the pitch pipe, and I, I respect that. Uh, but keep in mind that... Uh, if I start playing my pitch pipe while we're singing, uh, you know, and trying to keep up with you on that, that's going to, 
It's only going to be in a key C signature anyway. That'd be tough. But it is sent, or used rather, for one note to help us pitch, hopefully, on the right pitch, and then the singing begins. Okay? So it's not an addition to the music itself that we use. And the same thing about a microphone. It enhances, but it doesn't change the type of music. See, that's the key. The type of music, and when we define music from the first point, was to note that there was two types of music. One, vocal, and two, mechanical. And so mechanical uh, changed not just for the singing, it adds a separate music, the mechanical, that is done with the singing. So it's not the same as an aid. Now, I know in today's climate, people may just say, well, oh, well that's petty. Who cares? I mean, we're trying to convince people to even see why God even matters in their life much less seem to quibble back and forth over whether or not we have instrumental music or don't or anything. Brethren, it is very important that we understand why God has designed the worship the way he has. And we, he, we need to, uh, and I'll say myself, do a better job of teaching people why we do what we do and why we don't have mechanical instruments of music. And why we don't keep part of the old law and part of the new law together. Because James 2 said is if you keep all of the whole law yet offend in one point, the same is guilty of all. You can't just keep part of the law. You have to keep all of it. and You have to follow it in God's way. So, now, here's our last point. What is the authorized music in worship? You see, I said we had instrumental music in worship. We do. I mean, not what people think, but we do have instrumental music. But what is the instrument? God has given us an instrument. And it's not just the music, the, the vocal part. Because you can sing, but not use the instrument that God has given. Okay, well, let's look at Ephesians 5.19 where it says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making, as the NIV says, making music in your heart to the Lord. The, the, the word really is making melody in your heart to the Lord. That word melody is solo. Now, in the boswell Hardeman debate, there was a lot of discussion upon this word, solo, because solo literally means to pluck with the strings. Uh, could be with a bow or, you know, the, the movement as we would know in stringed instruments with bow. But to pluck with the strings. And so Boswell said, there you go. There's your authority right there. He says, pluck with the strings. So therefore, we are authorized to pluck with the strings a mechanical instrument of music. Yeah. Well, if that's the case... You have to put it into its verse. Everyone in here, if you follow Ephesians 5.19, would have to pluck with the strings. But what, what instrument are you going to be bringing next Sunday? You're going to bring a harp? Well, I like, I like classical guitar. I mean, I've also had an SG. I uh, had a PRS, uh, electric guitar. I had a... Uh, um, I had a flying V. I gave it to my son-in-law. I had all kind of instruments I like. How many people like a banjo out here? We got to find something with strings. Oh yeah, brother, Roy, brother Roy guy. He likes a banjo. I know brother Dallas does. Which one are you gonna bring? You see, there is where the division comes. Uh, what if they want to use something completely else in a different culture in a different time? There's the problem again. The answer really is in the text itself. You see, when someone tries to use a verse to teach error, you go to that same verse and you put it back into its context because the Bible doesn't teach error. The instrument is named, In your heart to the Lord. <laughs> right? 
singing and plucking the strings in your heart to the Lord. There's the instrument. And brethren, every one of us have it. And everybody we understand has been created by God with that instrument. It is his instrument, and every one of us have it. It's our, as we know, the biblical heart. And you pluck that, that instrument with the strings. That's what you do. And everyone has it. There's no confusion. And they're going to have it as, until the Lord comes back. God has done things for a reason. He has engineered a system, and we don't need to mess with the engineering of it. It is timeless. So, yes, the heart can be an instrument. John 10, 9, Jesus says, I am the door. Does that mean that he was literally a door that swung upon hinges? No, it meant that he is the entrance way. It is a figurative thing. Our heart is a figurative instrument. God has given. And brethren, keep, keep in mind what singing also does. It teaches. The reciprocal nature of Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourselves as we teach one another, it's the reason why we don't have a choir up here. We don't have performance. The singing that God has told us what to do, has given us permission to do only, is to teach one another with our singing. And so we're speaking reciprocally one to another, as Colossians 3.16 says, teaching one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's the reason why the songs that we sing are to teach the truth. 1 Peter 4.11 they are to speak as the oracles of God, not just sing whatever we want. We don't get up here and say, Old MacDonald had a farm. We don't, uh, we don't sing the national anthem. We don't sing songs that teach error because we're teaching one another with these songs. And so... This eliminates a few things also. There was a movement that took place uh, about 30 years ago, the a cappella movement. These brethren would get up there and they would make and imitate these particular sounds. They were very impressive. Percussion and other things like that that they were able to do. There were people all oh, loved it. It's just wonderful how talented they were. We kind of miss the point when you think that way because as we read in Leviticus, we understand that God says, I will be sanctified when one comes nigh unto me. It's about God is who we worship. It's not a performance. And not only that and those wonderful talents that they had, you don't teach when you're humming. Or you don't teach when you're doing these other things. You can't. That's why God made it simple for us. I mean, I, I love music. I am a fan of music. I am a fan of a lot of things. But it doesn't have to do with what we do here in worship. I like a lot of food. But we don't have it here on the Lord's table. Because God has given us permission to do it what he wants. You see, as we understand just the basic problems within the world is that people are used to uh, cater to what I want, cater to what I like. It's all about me when I go out into this service-oriented world. How do we make the customer get what he wants so that they will keep coming back? Brethren, we get a steady diet of getting what we want. We can choose whatever TV we want to watch uh, show. We can choose this, we can choose that. Have all this service out here Choosing to do what you want and what I want. But when we come to worship service, it is the absence of that. It is the opposite of that. It is all about doing what God wants. The fact that you're even here this morning is because you have sacrificed things that you could choose to want to do and have chosen to put God first. That's what it's all about. And so, yeah, we could spice things up and make things be more appealing here. Offer a lot more services and do a lot more things that people would consider fun. Don't we get enough of that out there in the real world? 
out there where we live, why not come into the worship service and keep it simple and glorify God and do it his way? And the church will be united together and the church will all be able to speak the same things. I appreciate your time. I think we have dealt enough with the subject. Appreciate your good attention. If you want to be a member of the church you read about in the New Testament, you do so by doing God's prescribed way. You have to hear the truth. You've got to know it. You've got to hear it. You can't obey that which you haven't hear, heard. You've got to believe it. People here don't necessarily obey, uh, believe it. You've got to change your life. It's got to have an impact on you. You've got to be willing to repent. Confess Christ as the Son of God. You'll be saved when you are immersed in water coming into contact with His blood. Acts twenty two sixteen. 16, your sins will be washed away by the blood of Christ. Many other passages we can talk about. If you're a member of the Lord's kingdom but have been unfaithful in a private way, please understand, deal with that, and the Lord will take care of those things. 1 John 1, 9. And we understand those, if they've sinned publicly, need to deal with that. This is an opportunity to get your life right with God. Please respond while we stand and sing together. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing?
thank you for thanking you for this occasion, thanking you for that great sacrifice. Uh, help us to meditate on that uh, great and loving gift as we partake of this bread, which represents that body that was sacrificed on our behalf. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us bow as we give thanks for the cup. Likewise, Heavenly Father, this time we come to you thankful for this commemoration, this fr uh, fruit of the vine that represents that blood that was shed on our behalf. I pray that we will do so in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable in your sight, uh, truly meditating on this great gift and uh, giving thanks for it. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>
That concludes the Lord's Supper. We now have opportunity to give back as we've been prospered. Let us pray. Lord, at this time we come to you thankful for the many ways you bless us. We thank you for the material blessings of this life, for the skills and abilities that we have uh, that allow us to earn a living. We pray at this time that we have purpose in our hearts to give back a portion to you. We pray that the monies that are collected will uh, do the most good for your purpose. Uh, we also pray that we as, as followers of Christ will always um, live with gratitude and uh, giving hearts that we may be the example that you would have us to be. Uh, Father, we just ask you to be with us and help us in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your presence this morning. Glad that you were able to be here. I'm sure that you appreciated the benefits you received by being able to fellowship and worship God together in spirit and in truth. I also am sure that you extend your thanks and appreciation to Brother Israel Crocker for having delivered that sermon to us this morning. It came from God's holy word and we appreciate the fact that he stuck with the book and that we can appreciate the delivery and the study that he put into it and that benefited us spiritually without any question. We'll meet again this evening at six o'clock. We'll do the same thing that we did this morning. I invite you to come back. Let's have fellowship together, worship together, and be strengthened as a result. In closing, we'll sing the first and the fifth verse of 859 and after we've done that brother Stephen Underwood will lead us in our closing prayer we invite you to stand as we sing these two verses to bow with me to go to heavenly father in prayer most kind and gracious and loving heavenly father hallowed be thy holy and divine name we thank you so much for every blessing you pour down upon us each and every day but especially for the blessing of, of their only begotten son our lord and savior jesus christ we thank you so much for his willingness to die for us and pay that price that we owe but we're unable to pay for our own sins and father we thank you so much brother saint john leading us in these songs and hymns this morning 
pray that it's been a sweet savor unto you, Heavenly Father, and that everything that's said and done in this worship service has been in accordance, in accordance to thy holy and divine will. We thank you for the lesson, Brother Israel. Thank the fine job that he always does. Heavenly Father, knowing that uh, you have commanded us in the way that we should worship, and that's the only way that's acceptable unto thee. And may we always, here at the congregation in Foley, worship in a manner pleasing and acceptable unto thee. Heavenly Father, we're mindful of all those who are on a sick list. There's just so many that are is not doing well at this time. We pray a special prayer for Brother Kenneth Rourke. Just pray that Brother Rourke will be able to uh, get the treatment that he needs, Heavenly Father, and be with the doctors and nurses that are attending upon him. Just pray that he'll be able to to have a quick recovery and be able to uh, be back to his normal walk of life and with us very soon. Heavenly Father, we know we're weak and simple. We do stumble and fall, and we pray, Heavenly Father, we'd be quick to repent, knowing you're good and kind and just to forgive us if we ask in accordance to thy will. Pray you will be with us on through this week if we have this time upon the earth, and pray that heaven will be our home when this life is over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.